Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Ugh. Friends, friends, I stand before you confused, bewildered, disgusted. I want you to know I take no pleasure in this Batman versus, I'm sorry, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice is a bad movie. Heck, it's barely even a movie. It's so crammed full with disparate elements, scenes, and characters, it collapses under the weight of its corporate responsibilities and its own misguided sense of self-importance. I find it both reprehensible and inexcusable to sell this two and a half hour cash grab as a valid, you know, piece of entertainment or work of art that tells a coherent story or makes sense. Look, these are basic baseline requirements here. If you can't hold my attention with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman in the mix, there is something seriously wrong with your approach. Now, I can feel the rabid DC fans and apologists out there gearing up their online bile spewing machine now. Accuse me of bias if you want, but I love Batman. I love Superman, and I love good cinema. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is a movie that simply pees into a mason jar, calls it Granny's Sweet Tea, and tells you to go ahead and take a sip. I got tricked into drinking it, same as you. The difference is, I fully intend to be honest with both myself and with you about the experience. Ugh. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth, and as always, I will remain spoiler free. Oh boy, where to even begin? Batman v Superman is a film that is overstuffed, overlong, and incredibly overwrought. I can't even really summarize what I saw because the narrative threads are so muddy and confused. The clues to the central mystery don't add up. Brilliant characters make huge logical mistakes, rules of science and personal alliances and characters' abilities and their weaknesses, they change and shift with no rhyme or reason and they're never fully defined. Other characters just happen to know things that they couldn't possibly know, and other people are revealed to have engineered master plans that are so convoluted they defy any reasonable sense of strategy or even sanity. Look, you try and tell me when it's all revealed about Lex Luthor, about what his plan was and how he executed it, that there's any way he could have predicted it would work out that way. Go ahead. You know, you know what? Don't bother. I don't want to spend any more of my time thinking about this movie. And that's really what this boils down to. I don't wish to revisit this film in any capacity. It was bleak, it was ugly, it was no fun. And you know me, I insist that my comic book movies be at least a little bit fun. The only one having any fun here is Jesse Eisenberg going way, way over the top with twitchy histrionics and playing to the cheap seats with his spastic energy. He's annoying, but at least he's infusing some sort of energy. The rest of the film and all of the performances are so morose and full of posturing grandeur. Zack Snyder builds iconography into each shot, trying to create a classic visual feel, but all that really does is underline the film's smug self-importance. Every scene of dialogue contains platitudes and metaphysical sound bites. The Hans Zimmer score, which I actually liked, especially the themes that carry over from Man of Steel, just blasts out of nowhere to manufacture gravitas with its relentless percussive drumbeat. And there's all this hand wringing, lots of heroes glowering at each other with hate in their eyes. Mmm. Two hours of that. Oh, and that is a major problem. Look, all week long I've been hearing the same thing from lifelong comics fans. All my life, I've wanted to see Batman fighting Superman. And I gotta say, that's really odd to hear because all my life, I wanted to see Batman and Superman in the same movie, but working together like they did on Super Friends, you know? I've speculated, sure, like as an exercise or something, you know, who would win, how would the fight end, but I've never really fantasized about seeing it because seeing people that you love absolutely hate each other, enough to want to kill each other, is not fun and really erodes your affection for both of them. And here, in order to get them to fight, both heroes are working off misinformation, prejudices, and even a late extortion attempt as a motivation to finally fight each other. 
It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel fun. It's creepy and repugnant to see our heroes so misguided. And Superman takes the worst hit of all. And this is technically his sequel anyway. The big blue Boy Scout, glowering and sneering, subject to blackmail, issuing threats of violence. Oh, and the way that the fight ends, uh, built upon a massive, stupid coincidence. I guarantee you that whenever you fantasized about Batman fighting Superman, however you imagine the fight ending, it was way better than how it ends here. It's not truly a Batman or a Superman movie if you have to dilute, confuse, or corrupt the purity of the characters in order to get them to fight each other. And lastly, and this is no spoiler after the second to last trailer, but when Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman end up on the same side finally near the very end, they do so to fight a villain that we don't care about, Doomsday. A monster that doesn't speak, isn't compelling, looks like a big piece of poop with a face, and was only introduced into the movie seconds before. So why should we care about the outcome of this fight? Why should we care about these weird dream sequences? Why should we care about the other future Justice League of America superheroes that get introduced via one character's hacked email attachments? Yeah, seriously. That scene takes about five full minutes to pause the plot completely while they blatantly promote the other characters in the DC universe. And you look at why this movie is two and a half hours long, and you see all this extra fluff that pollutes the story, and it makes you wonder if this extra crap was just added so that the movie would feel more substantial or epic. I bet it was. This movie is such a failure, I feel compelled really quickly to point out the things that worked. Don't worry, it won't take long. I thought Ben Affleck brought a really unique spin on the Batman character. This was a solid interpretation of the character from him, although again, I feel that they changed the character a bit to make him more morally questionable. This is a Batman who kills, steals, and tortures, maims. He's a really dark dude, man. And do we really need to see the Batman origin story again? Fun fact, this movie marks the second time that Hans Zimmer has written the score for a scene in which Thomas and Martha Wayne get gunned down. Also of note, Gal Gadot is a great Wonder Woman, and as she isn't involved in the titular fight, there was no need to make her the slightest bit unlikable, so she comes off really well. I also did enjoy the Hans Zimmer Wonder Woman theme, this sort of screaming electric Dick Dale electric guitar motif, but when it pops up loudly on the soundtrack each time she comes on screen, it gets a little It's all just a bit much, you know? You could say that about the whole movie. It's too much, it's too loud, too dark, too brooding, and it's much, much too long. I award Batman vs Superman a small bag of popcorn. This movie has a few cool moments, but they're buried by too much transparent world building and overly complex plotting. It sure looks great, that is until the really, really dark finale but it is surprisingly empty for a movie that is so long and so bloated with material. Does it work as a guilty pleasure perhaps? Visual eye candy? Something to buy on Blu-ray and then pop in on a rainy day just because? No, because it's not intrinsically fun. And it's such a struggle to get to those cool parts, you'll probably, on those rainy days, just opt to put in something that's wall-to-wall -wall fun like Ant-Man. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other episodes, and more importantly, while you're there, click subscribe so you can keep up with all the latest episodes, and so we can keep the lights on around here. Please leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and won't you please take a sip of this yummy sweet tea? Go ahead. Go ahead, take a sip.